They say the greatest adventure is life. But if you don't stop to just be present, you're gonna miss it. And that's why 18 souls cross the equator, landing in Peru, to seek out an adventure of a lifetime, to trek the Inca Trail. As we crossed the Urubamba River, we began our four-day journey through the Andes Mountains, navigating steep, narrow mountain paths and experiencing altitude and landscapes that were literally breathtaking. Fortunately, our guides were experts in this journey and always kept us happy and positive and cared for. 10 minutes in, I mean, I'm feeling pretty worn down. Uh, it's not looking optimistic at this point, but we'll be okay. We thought it'd be the energy bars that kept us going, but really, it was the jokes. But it was our amazing, superhuman porters that did almost all the heavy lifting. We transported our food, our supplies, and even set up our camp each night. As we continued our climb, each step led to a new vista, or an ancient Inca ruin. Our guide, Sandro, certified in Inca history, would stop and give us intimate details of the Incan culture along the way. In shape, and structure, you see them? Those were storage houses where those Incas, they store all their food there. And also there's one water aqueduct, Inca water aqueduct. You see that line? So they brought, at the Inca's time, they brought water from Veronica. So later on, we are going to see many more Inca remains. Before lunch, at least two more Inca remains we are going to see uh, in about maybe one hour, hour and a half. Time seemed to stand still as we marched on through the mountains. We found Machu Picchu! <laughs> Good thunder! Oh my God! Oh, wow. And we were amazed and, and, quite frankly, even joyous every time we approached another historical site. Its name is Yachtapata. What is Quechua name, which means the town of, in the upper part. It doesn't have like a nice meaning, just the town in the upper part. Each stop was an informative history lesson, detailing how the Incas used this site for religious functions and housing. The long fortified terraces carved into the mountains aided in the Incas' crop production and food supply. We took a lot in that first day. We finally made it to our first base camp at Huayla Bamba. Our porters set up the tents and cooked us dinner. And we also had an opportunity to learn about the local culture. So look, look this poncho. He's where he's going to work. It's from his home village. Village. We slept well that night. The next morning, we enjoyed our breakfast and began our trek early. The path was a little steeper now, and the ancient steps laid down centuries ago never seemed to stop. And also he visited this uh, Inca city that we saw yesterday before lunch. Yes, so locals, only locals walk this uh, path nowadays because some, some sections is very narrow and very steep dangerous for our hikers. Our guide, Ever, explained that we must watch every step. And with each step, we gained more altitude, higher than some of us had ever been before. Hey, standing here at 10,000 feet, feeling good. 
Woo! That's a minute. Five more hours to go. Let's go. And as we continued our trek with our guides Sandro and Juan Carlos bringing up the rear and keeping us all safe, we stopped to rest and learned about the medicinal properties of the Peruvian coca leaf. I put this quinoa in there and then I wrap a little bit more up. Then I'm going to put these leaves either in this side of your mouth or here. Like, and then I am going to keep these leaves for about um, 15 or 20 minutes or some people you know, uh, can keep these uh, leaves for 10 minutes. The coca leaf is a religious symbol, and it also provides a bit of energy, like an espresso, and it can protect against altitude sickness. It was here where we met our friend and trail dog, who we later named Tito. He followed us everywhere. I'm tired. But the coca leaf is keeping me going. And keep us going it did. In a few hours we reached the cloud forest, in a jungle-like setting with streams and waterfalls everywhere you looked. We've hiked up a couple thousand feet so far this morning. And what's really cool is to see all the different climates. Um, we've got, uh, you know, it was kind of more arid and dry a few thousand feet down. And now as you can see, we're in a a cloud forest, as it's called. It's much more of like a rainforest vibe, as you can see. And um, yeah, we've got our little trail dog following us. And uh, yeah, it's just been really cool to meet the locals and see so many microclimates and, and uh, see our crew over here just trucking it out. It's not for the faint of heart, that's for sure. The cloud forest was as beautiful as the trail was treacherous. The steps seemed to get bigger as Deadwind's Pass loomed around the corner. As we exited the cloud forest, we really started to gain altitude. Every step seemed to get harder and harder. Dead Woman's Pass sits approximately 14,000 feet. It's the highest altitude we experienced while trekking the Inca Trail, and it was filled with surprises. Llamas, alpacas, and dogs everywhere. As we continued trekking towards Machu Picchu, it was a constant battle. One second you'd be focused on the beautiful vistas and gorgeous landscapes, and the next you'd simply be trying to not die. As the air got thinner, so did the trails. Coming up over the mountain. And that's the payoff. I can't believe we're at almost 14,000 feet. And you look at these mountains around us and they're even higher. But we made it, one yeah. step at a time. Yeah, I'm grateful. But you know what? That's my word, grateful. That last, I think the steps got taller. As we got further up, they got, they got bigger. <laughs> I was tired. I'm feeling very proud of everyone, right? It was not easy, but we made it. Now all we had to do was climb down, and that was just as hard. After another phenomenal dinner, we all slept well that night. Breakfast is ready! Yeah! Llamas are, you know, in the, in the U.S., this is rock on. <laughs> That's right. One of the best surprises of our adventure were the perfectly prepared meals. Delicious proteins, carbs, and fats that definitely fueled our journey. On the third morning, we got to know our porters and chefs on a more personal level, 
and they got to know us. It was at this point where we really became one big family. He, he got two little bambinos. Back at it, once again climbing the steps carved centuries ago into the Andes Mountains. You can see the base camp three just over our shoulders. The trail undulates with very steep stairs to subtle inclined paths. Nevertheless, you were always aware you were going up. It's just like magnificent. There's so much behind it. There's so much to learn and it's, it's one of the seven wonders of the world for a reason. It's a lot of steps, and we're going up. Keep going. The Incans were smart, as they built rest areas along the way, and we took advantage of every one of them, and took in each incredible view as well. We are here in Runcuracay Incan site. Amazing. Uh, located in the middle of the mountains. And according to historians, this place used to be a rest spot for these uh, Incan people who probably uh, have to walk to the sanctuary of the Incas Machu Picchu very often. It is perfect place to get uh, to get some provisions as well, such as water and food. And that we did, along with Tito, who followed our every step. As we tracked further into the clouds, we climbed up to a peak where our guide Sandro explained the importance of giving back to Mother Earth, Pachu Mama. In the mountains, we are how, how big we are, or how small we are, tiny. So, you know, if we want to con connect with the nature, we use this amazing coccolips. So, in this case, coccolips are also a kind of religious stuff for us. It became obvious as we sat on top of that mountain how small we really are and how precious Earth and nature truly is. We continued our trek through the cloud-enveloped mountains. The weather started coming in, and the mist impaired our visibility. Which might have been a good thing, because we needed to concentrate on every step. And when the mountain became too steep to support a path, we just went through it. as cautiously as possible. All right, here we go. Yeah, come on in. This is amazing. Oh my gosh. I love all the different colors. The moss on the wall. It's so pretty. That's amazing. It makes the uh, training pay off <laughs> to see all of this. That was epic. <laughs> epic it was. It seemed like we were on another planet. Filled with stairs and ruins of an ancient civilization. that looked like a painting. And centuries old aqueducts still flowing. 
Most people don't get to witness the complex and mystical architecture of the ancient Incas unless they make this journey. At the end of the day, a rainbow appeared. But uh, from here, we are hiking a mostly uphill. Yes, but it's weird, so we're going to find still some uh, undulating sections, but it's going to be mostly uphill to Sandgate. Then on the way, uh, on the way, before we will get to Sandgate, you're going to get surprised. If you have a fear of heights, by day four, it will be gone. Each step we knew brought us closer to Machu Picchu. However, the Inca Trail will teach you. It truly isn't about the destination. It's the journey. Here's our surprise, a wall several stories high that led to the sun gate. Get it, Mark. Oh, man. Climbing those final steps to the sun gate at almost 9,000 feet, this was the view that we'd been waiting for. That's incredible. So worth it. In a view wow. of the valley that you can only get by hiking the Inca Trail. Oh my gosh. Wow, look at us, man. In a view of Machu Picchu, you can only get by hiking the Inca Trail. It's indescribable. It is. It's worth every step. I mean, this is a certain light. This is a for sure a high point in life. I mean, this is just amazing to see. It's, it's unbelievable. Even if that wasn't there, this would be incredible. <laughs> and this, that's there. I mean, I've gone on many trips with many different people and it's very interesting to see that you put a group of people from different backgrounds, different areas, and just throw them together in this trip that we planned so long ago. And we spend four days ago, four days together we bond together, and then we come to this moment we talked about forever, just to see, and it's just, it's sheer awe to, to look at together. It's quite a surprise, and it's, it's wonderful to see. This is everything I thought it would be and, and more. Um, just seeing the, the sheer beauty of this place is incredible. I, I first learned about Machu Picchu as a kid. I played a video game where we, it's called World Explorer, and we would go to different places. And this was always my favorite of all the places you could go. So since I was a kid, I wanted to visit this place. And uh, I'm glad we found a group that was willing to put in the work, willing to take the steps, and the sheer appreciation of, of the, the people who came before us and put in the work to make this place as, as beautiful as it is. It's, it's been the hardest thing I've ever done, physically, but it's been one of the best things I've ever done, and what a great group of people. All these, I just love everybody. There's a lot of people who want to do this, and not a lot of people who can, and have been hanging out with a, with a group of people who can do this, and, and have made it a commitment to do it months ago. So it's a, it is a, a moment where we, Put on the calendar six months ago, here we are, we've arrived. We've had a, an epic adventure. Uh, it's a game changer. I'm here with my boys. I want to thank Justin in particular for making this happen, putting all the hard work together. An outstanding trip with an outstanding group. Couldn't be happier. So this has been uh, a, a difficult trek, probably more difficult than uh, I, I imagined it to be. But uh, now that we're here and, uh, and seeing this and just uh, getting to know everybody in the group uh, truly did become a family. So it, uh, it's it been an, an amazing journey to get here. It's just oh, okay. unimaginable how beautiful the place is to, to come through the sun gate and see this creation 
and the Incas, what they created this high up in the mountains. Just grateful, so grateful, that's it. Just so grateful for the opportunity uh, to take people from where they are to where they want to be. That's what strength uh, is all about. That's what Procore is all about. So, so thankful and grateful for this opportunity. It speaks for itself. It's just overwhelmingly beautiful. And obviously the journey to get here more so. I mean, meeting all the people and just getting to know everybody on a more personal level. Oh my, God. Oh my gosh. And our dog. <laughs> Oh, 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 oh. You see? Yeah, he's your dog. Oh, oh, All right, I'm shooting inside bar. Oh, no. okay, now, what do you think about that? Unbelievable. <laughs> That's our dog, by the way, our dog Tito. I'm sure you've seen him on film already, but <laughs> wow. Just wow. I'm so grateful for this opportunity. Not many people get to do this. Happy Machu Picchu! Happy Texas! And with our trail dog Tito in tow, we hike down to the historic city of Machu Picchu. A masterpiece of art, architecture, and engineering in perfect harmony with nature. Abandoned during the second half of the 16th century, it was in 1911 when Hiram Bingham, a Yale University professor, rediscovered the ancient Incan site while searching for the lost city of the Incas. Additional discoveries later found that Machu Picchu was one of the series of fortified sites along the extensive Inca foot highway. The role that women play, my friends, was probably the, one, the most important. Without the help of the women, probably this civilization could not that develop that fast as they did. I always, my friends, consider that the Incas, they did a brilliant job because also women helped a lot. Our trip has been nothing short of spectacular. The views, the history, and the realization of how fit and healthy this ancient civilization must have been. The Incas could record three Inca values. Work, love, and then one. Mm. Yes, three Inca values. And here lies the point. The point of the trip and the point of this film. Your health, your fitness, is a prerequisite to everything you care about. In other cities that uh, rocks fit so tight, so tightly. It's the most fundamental component of a life well lived. It's what gives you the energy and the vitality to live fully. It's bigger than some vanity goal like a six pack or dropping a few inches. We train so we can experience life, so we can live without limitations. We train because it allows us to form new friendships and strengthen old ones. We train because it's the bedrock we build the best version of ourselves on. I'm not saying your life should be all about training. I'm saying your training is about life. So show up consistently and train to live.